Okay, here we go. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll kind of work backwards here a little bit, uh, but okay. I want to start with um, you were in British military intelligence. That's and correct. And then you ended up being a police officer in Nampa, Idaho. And that's kind of an unusual career path. So how did that happen? Okay, well, basically what happened was... Uh, I was in uh, the British military and then I transferred from there to uh, GCHQ, um, which is government headquarters, communication headquarters. And I used to go abroad uh, for four months trips, unaccompanied trips. And uh, when I got, I used to go to Turkey, was where, where I basically went. And I do four months over there. And I happened to meet my, my wife now. Um, she was in the American military and she was serving on the base that I was attached to and uh, so we kind of got together and uh, she came over to England because obviously I was still working there. Um, she came over to England, we got married, uh, we lived there for five years and we used to come back to the States to visit her mother who lived in Nampa um, and she got pretty sick. so. We decided to come and live over here. So what happened was, what happened was, uh, prior to me emigrating, I uh, I came over and was looking for work, see what kind of work was out, out you know, in the states. And I thought, well, maybe I could uh, do something in law enforcement. I don't know. Well, we were up in McCall, and I was fishing, and I bumped into a guy who was a U.S. marshal, and I was just fishing. We were talking and he said, what do you do? And I said, well, you know, I work for the British government. And uh, he said, well, what, do you, what are your plans for the future? I said, well, actually, I'm, we're thinking of emigrating over here because my wife's mother's not too well. And uh, we'd like to come over so she could, you know, kind of help out and look after me. <clears throat> so he said, why don't you be a cop? And I'm like, cop? What do I want to be a cop for? I, mean, I wasn't really sure if that was kind of, I know what I wanted to do. He said, yeah, be a police officer. So anyway, <clears throat> I won't mention names and stuff like that, but um, on my way back from McCall, I stopped in. He gave me the name of a, of a place to go, you know, a city to go and see if they were, were hiring. And I popped in there and got some information from the, from the, uh, from the chief about law enforcement and how, how we would do it. And uh, so I thought, okay, maybe that's a good career path for me. So we went back. To England, and I walked into work, and on a Monday morning, and said, "I'm quitting. I'm retiring, resigning." And uh, they kind of looked at me like, "You retiring? You resigning?" I'm like, "Yeah," because I mean, I had a good government job. I mean, it's kind of like having a federal job here, I suppose. You know, good Not benefits, moment, good pension. You know, well, at the moment, no, obviously. But uh, so, uh, so I re I resigned and put my house on the market. You know, the, all the usual things, and uh, ended up. On the 28th of October, 1989, um, obviously I'd done all my paperwork with the American Embassy and all, you know, got all that done, and uh, and which is not cheap, by the way. And uh, so uh, I get off the plane and I arrive in uh, Nampa. My wife's mother picked me up, picked us up. Um, so I get here and I'm thinking, well, what am I, you know, how am I going to? start this off this career so anyway I, I went to find out about getting on with this particular department and suddenly found out you have to be an American citizen to be a to be a police officer and uh, nobody told me that well you can't be an American citizen for a good three to five years uh, living here so I thought hmm, this is uh, interesting well I, I actually had uh, bought a house in Emmett probably giving me a clue where I was thinking of working <laughs> So I bought a house in Emmett and uh, it was a fixer-up, fixer-up house, it was trash basically. And uh, so we lived in a little trailer which was beside the house and I, and I started fixing it up. And I, it's very difficult to go from a, from a position where you're, how can I put it, well, uh, it was quite a, um, a high stress, it was a technical position, earning good money and suddenly arrive in somewhere where you're not earning any money. And uh, so I started coaching soccer, or football as I call it, but soccer, and in Emmett. And one of the, one of the fathers of the soccer team, um, he was a plumber. 
and he came up to me and said, uh, what, have you found any work yet? I'm like, no, I haven't really found fucking hay and stuff like that, but no, I haven't found any work. So he said, well, I'm looking for a labourer. So I said, doing what? He said, putting in air conditioner and gas lines. And I'm thinking, gas lines? Okay, I, I, can, I can do that. I can put gas lines in and run pipe or whatever. So uh, he said, well, we start Monday morning and we pay $5 something an hour. And I thought, well, $5 is better than no dollars. So uh, I turned up in the morning and loaded up in the truck and we went to a, a project he had going in uh, Boise. It was a big complex, apartment complex. And uh, so I thought, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, well, you start at this end of the apartment and you take a drill and you drill holes all the way from one end to the other and, and we have to run, I forget whether it was one inch gas line, galvanized pipe, and then uh, I forget, some flexible uh, air condition line and then a three quarter inch line or half inch line of copper. So I started at the end, I thought, well, how, the, how the hell am I gonna do this? How am I gonna figure out so that when I start here and I get right there, these are all going to match up. So I made little templates and, and uh, I stood there for oh, weeks just drilling through different, drilling all these holes all the way across the whole floor, if you like. And uh, out of the corner of my eye, I could see the airport, Boise Airport. And uh, I was starting to think, what the hell am I doing here? drilling holes when I was working for the British government, making a lot of money, having a good time. And here I am drilling holes in America. <laughs> and I'd watch those planes take off and think, man, I'm just gonna go get on the plane and go back, you know? And uh, anyway, I didn't. And I progressed. The story is that we, I drilled the first apartment from one end to the other. And then the gas fitter came in with his pipe. And these are long pipes. And you've got to be pretty much straight on. Well. He went to the end and he pushed that pipe and it went right the way through and he joined it up and man, I had every one of those things lined up. So the guy then came to me and said, uh, hey, he said, uh, you fancy uh, stepping up a bit and maybe running uh, some of the lines and stuff? Anyway, long story short, <clears throat> I ended up installing and, and going to college uh, to BSU with, with this guy and, and to, to kind of get you know my journeyman license and everything else and run gas line. Anyway, they went bust halfway through the job. Um, I just was fixing up my house in Emmett and I got it all fixed up and I just bought a load of furniture and was going to have carpets installed and they phoned me up and said, don't bother coming to work, we're done. I'm like, whoa. So I uh, cancelled the carpets, cancelled everything. And then, funnily enough, the guy that took over the job site phoned me up, offered me another eight or nine bucks an hour more and put me in charge of the whole job site. So I ended up running the, running the job site. Well, prior to that, whilst this was going on, my wife used to be a police officer with Nampa. And she was Nampa's first female officer. And then uh, she went and joined the army. Well, she obviously got out of the army and she came back and she was a dispatcher <coughs> at Nampa. So I used to go down to Nampa PD um, in the evenings on a Saturday or you know, Friday and Saturday, and uh, ride around and uh, with guys off of her team. And there was uh, a good friend, a good, well, he's a good friend now, and Jimmy Jeans, he was a lieutenant. And Curtis Homer, do you remember Curtis Homer? He used to be the, the chief of police here. Yeah, and he was a city councilman before. Yeah, and city councilman, and uh, you know, so, so those guys kind of, I used to go ride around with them because my wife was working, I had nothing else to do. So, anyway, then, uh, they, they kind of tweaked my interest more in it and they said, well, you fancy being a reserve officer? And I'm like, well, I don't know, really, yeah, I suppose. And uh, Richard Huff, who was in charge of the, uh, the program, the reserve program, and Marshal Brisbane was the chief of police at the time, he said, uh, well, you want to try? So I tested and you have to, you know you do a physical and you do a psychological test and you do all the other things exactly the same as a full-time police officer does and somehow I guess I must have 
got through that, and then they took me on as a level as a reserve officer, and then I took the level one exam, which certif certification for a reserve police officer, and uh, I did that for three years, and then I got my citizenship. I applied for my citizenship, and. Uh, went and did my citizenship, got my citizenship, and then I got on with NAMPA full time. But in those days, they had a nepotism rule. And I don't know why, because now everybody and their dog works at NAMPA, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles. But in those days, 20 odd years ago, they had this nepotism rule, which I've never heard of in Europe. I mean, they like families to work together, you know. So, um, so my wife, she left. She left Namba PD and went um, back to Cannon County and then she went to Meridian PD and then eventually back to the state, ISP. And I got on at uh, Namba and that's how I got to be a police officer. So it was a long-winded, convoluted setup, but that's, that's where I ended up. And then I uh, got, got on there full time and was a patrol officer and that's it. Okay. Yeah. And did, uh, like the skills you learned in uh military intelligence, were you able to apply that into the police work? Not really. I, uh, it's, um, I think if there was anything I could apply from it, it was teamwork, um, you know, working closely with the team. But uh, I know it sounds contradictory, but um, also being an in individual, working individually, but also having that team concept. And, uh, you know, as far as, yeah, shooting a gun, uh, that, kind of, that kind of thing, um, yeah, driving a car, Fast. Those things I, I kind of brought with me, um, and probably a little bit of maturity through some of the situations I'd already been involved with when I was in the British military and in the, working for the government. And um, sometimes you have to work on your own, and you're a bit of a loner, and you know. And then, but you also have are responsible for a team and running a team. So I brought that to the table, but. As far as everything else, it was, it was quite a quite a shock, that, you know, for me to become a police officer and have all this equipment on my belt, and and then of course you have to think, well, situations to use it and when not to use it, when to use it. So a little bit different. Okay, so it was more of a kind of a matter of you just kind of develop these universal life skills. And yeah, uh, basically. And that's, that's pretty much. Well, you, you kind of learn to adapt, don't you? You kind of you you kind of look and you see. I mean, just driving on the other side of the road over here was a nightmare, you know. And driving a black and white police car with lights on it, you know, on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> and that's, well, you you, you figure that one out. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was kind of. Uh, driving was on the wrong side of the car. That, yeah, I used to write tickets to people for riding on the wrong side of the road all day until I realized I was the one that was on the wrong side of the road. No, I was just kidding. I didn't, I didn't do that. Yeah, it's a, well, have you ever heard that joke? It's a, um, this woman sees on uh, the TV that there's a car driving on the wrong side of the road. She notices it's on her husband's route home. Uh -huh. So she calls him on his cell phone and says, be careful, there's this guy, on the, uh, there's a car on the wrong side of the road. And he says, it's not just one, there's hundreds of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, 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 pretty much got it, yeah.